What are modes? And how to play mode 1, the Ionian scale. Before continuing with this tutorial, you need to have watched Understanding Key Signatures. The link will be in the description below. Modes are actually quite easy to understand. However, they're quite difficult to explain. So, in order to help, I'll use three quick methods to try and explain them. And hopefully, you'll understand one of them. Method 1 for explaining the modes. For this method, we'll use the two octave major scale. Now, if we play the first octave, that is from C to C, this is the Ionian mode. Then, if we play from the next note up, the D, and end on the next note up from the ending of the previous scale, the D again, we end up with the next mode. This is the Dorian mode. We can then move up again one note from the E to the E, and this is the Phrygian scale. We then continue going up in steps through the C major scale. So the next scale would be from F to F, and that would be the Lydian scale. After this, the next scale would be from G to G, and this would be the Mixolydian scale. Then, the next scale up would be from A to A, and this would be the Aeolian scale. The final scale would go from B to B, and that would be the Locrian scale. At this point, it's worth reminding you that even though each of these scales is different, they're still all in the key of C. Method 2 for explaining modes would be to use the pattern we originally used to explain the major scale and to help us understand key signatures. And that pattern was 2 2 1 2 2 2 1. If we extend this over two octaves so it gives us room to play with, we can then see that by moving the scale one shift up we create a whole series of new scales. They're all based around the pattern of the major scale, but each one is different. Again, this is the modes. Mode 1, the Ionian scale. Mode 2, the Dorian scale. Mode 3, the Phrygian scale. Mode 4, the Lydian scale. Mode 5, the Mixolydian scale, Mode 6, the Aeolian scale, and Mode 7, the Locrian scale. The third method for explaining the modes would be to use a piano keyboard. And here you can see clearly, if you start on the note C and finish an octave higher on C, this is a C major scale. Now, if we start on the D, and finish on the D. However, don't play any black notes. This is a new and unique scale. It's not the D major scale because the D major scale has sharps. In other words, you play the black notes. So by continuing on and playing each note of the C major scale in the form of a scale, we create a whole set of new scales. These again are the modes. The Ionian scale, the Dorian scale, the Phrygian scale, the Lydian scale, the Mixolydian scale, the Aeolian scale, and the Locrian scale.
Don't worry if you don't remember or didn't get any of the scales in the first part of this tutorial, that's not the idea. The idea was purely to help you understand the theory behind the modal scales. The only way to learn the modal scales effectively is to learn them one at a time and that's what we'll be doing over the next few weeks, starting with the Ionian scale. Mode 1, the Ionian scale. Something you might have noticed from the theory part of this tutorial is that the Ionian scale and the major scale are exactly the same. So, if you already know the major scale, you can already play the Ionian scale. However, if you do already know how to play the two octave C major scale, don't skip this tutorial because we'll be looking at some new material towards the end. Now, how to play the two octave Ionian or C major scale. Play the 8th fret of the bottom E string with the 2nd finger, then the 10th fret of the bottom E string with the 4th finger. Play the 7th fret of the A string with the 1st finger. Play the 8th fret of the A string with the 2nd finger. Play the 10th fret of the A string with the 4th finger. Play the 7th fret of the D string with the 1st finger. Play the 9th fret of the D string with the 3rd finger. Play the 10th fret of the D string with the 4th finger. Play the 7th fret of the G string with the 1st finger. Play the 9th fret of the G string with the 3rd finger. Play the 10th fret of the G string with the 4th finger. Play the 8th fret of the B string with the 2nd finger. Play the 10th fret of the B string with the 4th finger. Play the 7th fret of the top E string with the 1st finger. And finally, play the 8th fret of the top E string with the 2nd finger. Practice this scale until you can play it smoothly. And try and memorise it if you can. Once you've done this, play up the scale, then down the scale and keep practicing it until you have it smooth and well and truly memorized. If you had no trouble learning that scale, here's a different way of playing it. This scale is exactly the same scale, but played in a different way. It has three notes per string. This can be useful to create a different flow in your music, or for different techniques. Here's how to play this scale. Play the 8th fret of the bottom E string with the 1st finger. Play the 10th fret of the bottom E string with the 3rd finger. Then the 12th fret of the bottom E string with the 4th finger. Play the 8th fret of the A string with the 1st finger, then the 10th fret of the A string with the 3rd finger, then the 12th fret of the A string with the 4th finger. Play the 9th fret of the D string with the 1st finger, then the 10th fret of the D string with the 2nd finger, then the 12th fret of the D string with the 4th finger. Play the 9th fret of the G string with the 1st finger, then the 10th fret of the G string with the 2nd finger, then the 12th fret of the G string with the 4th finger. Play the 10th fret of the B string with the 1st finger, then the 12th fret of the B string with the 3rd finger, and finally, play the 13th fret of the B string with the 4th finger. As with the previous scale, practice this scale until you can get it smoothly and by memory, and then practice playing it up and back down. Memorising, practising and incorporating these two scales into your daily practice routine would certainly be worthwhile. Once you feel fairly confident you can play the Ionian or major scale by memory, it's worth turning your attention to your plectrum hand. 
The best and most efficient way of playing scales is to use alternate plectrum directions, which we call alternate picking for short. This means simply you go down up, down up, down up, or if you prefer up, down up, down up, down. <laughs> This way you'll get a smoother flow and you'll be able to build speed. We'll look at plectrum techniques in far more detail in a separate tutorial video, but for now experiment with alternate plectrum directions so you'll find it easier when we come to look at it. In the description below you'll find a link to all the ebooks used for these lessons. And if you like the lessons, subscribe and enable notifications so you can see when new ones become available. And of course, thanks for watching.